as we're streaming live. Um, I haven't got the confirmation, but it looks like it's progressing. So I will start the recording. And we are ready to go. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you to our virtual Gay Bay Board of School Directors regular board meeting for Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. Would you please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance with us to the flag on your screen? Pledge of Allegiance, allegiance to the flag to of the United, United States, States of America. America. And and to the Republic, Republic, which, is which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, Mrs. Isha? Yes. Mr. Kaleri. Mr. Kaleri. Here. <laughs> Mrs. Cerucci. Here. Mrs. Delaney. Here. Mr. Gallagher. Here. Mr. Gottman. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mrs. Warning. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Okay, normally in this part of the agenda, we go to comments from residents on agenda items. Um, Bonnie, do you have the slide that shows the residents how to comment on agenda items? Here you go. We can put that on the screen. And we're right. going to move along in, in our agenda to allow time for each people, each of these people to comment if they would like to on an issue. And then between sections, I'll check in with Bonnie and see if anybody has commented. Um, I have to turn on my chat. At this time, Sorry. I have no emails. I do not have any emails or, or um, voice messages. Okay, there's nothing on the chat yet. And you can also call and you can leave a voicemail with Bonnie. If you cannot see the number, it's 412-457. Just went away. Oh, I'm sorry. Six six five, and she'll check that and read that to us, or you can email gsd underscore school board underscore comments gateway k one two dot org, or if you're on the Zoom, you're welcome to send a chat. So let's move on to section A, minutes of previous meetings. So moved. John seconds. That's there a discussion. Scott Williams. Okay. Any questions or comments on the on the minutes of March 10th to March 17th? Seeing not all those favor. I better not do all those in favor. Let's do roll call since we can't see everybody. Mrs. Clary. Mr. Clary. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Let's move on to section B, bills, financial reports, and budget transfers, Mr. Schott. Thank you, Ms. Cerici. Uh, first, I like to, we'll do the section B, and then after the conclusion of the vote, I do have some information to share with all of our district stakeholders. Uh, sec section B, resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approve sections B1 list of bills as listed in section B at the Tuesday, April 21st, 2020 regular board meeting. And again, there's two sections, list of bills for section B1, uh, the list of bills previously presented at the study session meeting, and the second list of bills presented after a study session meeting. Uh, section B2, the financial statements for the month of March will be presented at a further date and there were no applicable section B3 budget transfers for the month of April as well. So moved. Second. Okay. Moved by Mr. Williams, second by Mr. Gottman. Discussion? Roll call when you're ready, Bonnie. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mrs. Delaney. Aye. Mr. Gallagher. Aye. Mr. Gottman. Aye. Mr. McIntyre. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. 
Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Caleri? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, motion carries. Now we're gonna open up the floor to our business manager, Mr. Shaw, for a financial report. Thank you, Mr. Cerucci. Uh, similar to last week's meeting, I do have a rather lengthy uh, set of comments to make regarding the COVID-19 pandemic financial effects on the district. Uh, please be aware that this information will be made officially part of the minutes uh, for anyone to be able to go back and to be able to review, but please bear with me. The Gateway School District is expected to receive some form of federal financial assistance as a result of the passage of the Federal CARES Act. A certain amount still to be officially determined of federal stimulus funds will be passed through the state to the district, and these funds are expected to be received during the upcoming 2021 fiscal year. All these distribution details still need to be discussed at the state level and specifically in relation to the completion of the state budget for the 2021 fiscal year. On the surface, the receipt of federal stimulus funds sounds great. However, I want to inform the district stakeholders exactly what the receipt of federal stimulus funds entails. Specifically, when receiving any type of federal funds, there is immediate issue of supplant versus supplement. Supplanting is essentially replacing state or local revenues with federal revenues in order to make existing expenditure purchases. Supplanting is not permitted with any type of federal funds received by an entity. Supplementing is taking new funds received and developing new expenditures in order to utilize the new funds. This issue will also apply to the federal stimulus funds the district will be receiving. The district will be forced to determine allowable expenditures for the use of the federal stimulus funds and then budget for the expenditure of these new applicable expenditures. The district and all school districts across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania should be given the option to supplant expected decreases in local revenues comprised primarily of interest earnings and local taxes with the new federal stimulus funds to provide true budgetary assistance or relief. If the resulting financial crisis from the current COVID-19 pandemic wasn't taking place, the district would surely welcome the receipt of new federal funds to enable the district to purchase new items and pay for services designed to enhance the student educational experience. In addition, state legislative action in the form of House Bill 974, which is an attempt wasn't it, by state legislators, specifically as, as of recently as yesterday, an amendment was attempted to be uh, put through to deny a school district of the ability to increase its real estate tax millage rate and corresponding current year real estate taxes for the upcoming 2021 fiscal year. And again, that is still pending. Uh, such an action would have a significant negative effect on the finances of all Pennsylvania school districts. Many school districts were planning to increase their real estate tax millage rates long before the current COVID-19 pandemic occurred. These school districts Needs, need these additional funds and do not have any other financial mechanism in place to offset their loss. The district is looking at all aspects of operations for ways to reduce expenditures or even eliminate expenditures now considered to be non-essential. Certain expenditures that can't be immediately reduced or eliminated must be maintained at existing 1920 fiscal year levels. During the COVID-19 pandemic financial crisis, the district absolutely can't permit certain expenditures to increase exponentially while local tax revenues will be decreasing to still yet to be determined unknown levels. Maintaining expenditures at current 1920 fiscal year levels or reducing current 1920 fiscal year expenditures for the 2021 fiscal year is the district's plan of action for attempting to balance the 2021 fiscal year general fund budget. As was done for the current 1920 fiscal year budget, the district is analyzing and identifying required expenditures in the upcoming 2021 fiscal year budget to purchase now in an effort to reduce the outstanding deficit for the 2021 fiscal year. These identified purchases will be presented for board review and consideration at the upcoming May board meetings. I also want to address the issue of fund balance. Those of you who have attended district budget and finance committee meetings have heard me discuss all aspects of fund balance. I want to inform the district stakeholders of the most important aspect related to fund balance. Fund balance should never be utilized to pay for ongoing expenditures each fiscal year in the budget. Fund balance should only be utilized and budgeted for to pay for items that are either non-reoccurring or of a, of a very infrequent nature of occurrence. 
fund balance needs to be available for a school district to offset unknown shortfalls or revenues or to offset unplanned emergency expenditures. The district has a healthy fund balance. However, the culmination of many negative financial effects resulting from the current COVID-19 pandemic will take its toll on the district's fund balance. Anytime a budget is compiled by a school district, the best available historical financial information, estimates, and calculations available are analyzed and incorporated into the budget development process. The district is in uncharted financial waters due to the current COVID-19 pandemic and doesn't have a previous historical period of similar revenue receipts in particular to look back upon to provide guidance on as to how to calculate the exact loss of revenue that will surely occur. The loss of revenue applies to local tax revenues as well as to the unknown effects still to be seen on state revenues. Traditional increases in state revenues will surely not occur under the current circumstances. The district needs to at least maintain current levels of state revenues and not experience any decreases in state revenues. Thank you. Thank you. Any Paul. questions for Mr. Shaw? Comments? Paul, this is John Ritter. You mentioned that the school has a healthy fund balance right now. Is it true that health can be measured in two ways? That is, it's unhealthy if you don't have enough money, and it's also unhealthy if you have too much money. If you collect too much money from the, the public and businesses so that the school has uh, is sitting on a, a lot of money, that's an unhealthy um, protocol. And, and conversely, if they have very little money to work with, that's also an unhealthy condition. And so our bond rating is geared to some small predefined range, and we fit in that healthy range right now. Is that true? We are definitely in the healthy range. In, in terms of fund balance, uh, there is what is recommended for a school district to have between 5 and 15% of its current budget in terms of fund balance. Um, as far as you, you made reference to the bonds, um, as if you've probably heard me say in the past, Moody's Investor Services, which actually put the, the most recent rating on the district's bonds that we refinanced during the month of March, uh, they have more of a what I'll call an unrealistic expectation on our fund balance. Um, for them, a fund, our, a fund balance, a healthy fund balance to them is in the range of 22%, which in, in terms of just to put a, a rough number on that would be around $17 million. W what we're looking at currently uh, as far as this school year is, a, and I'm just looking at my one set of notes here, bear with me for one second, is a fund balance of maybe around 8.3 to $8.4 million. Obviously, when this particular number was compiled, that was before some of our current um, rapid decline in terms of our economy was expected. But again, you know, that, that amount and even possibly utilizing some of that would still keep us in the maybe about the 8% range, about a mid-range in terms of between 5 and 15%. So yes. All right. So if I would ask one more final question about this. If you would, could you characterize what our relative stance is compared to the other 500 school districts in Pennsylvania? And um, are, are we in, in good shape right now? Are we about to go through very difficult times? Are some school districts in, in extraordinarily desperate times? I mean, we're all going to suffer a, you know, a bit over the next couple of months and maybe a year or so, but some school districts are gonna be in awfully difficult situations. Where do we stand relative to the other 500 school districts in Pennsylvania right now, Paul? Well, in terms of a, a specific ranking, I mean, that information I don't know, but in, in terms of where we are, you know, even ending up with a seven to $8 million fund balance to begin the 2021 fiscal year, uh, that's a good situation to be in. I would definitely not want to be in a situation where maybe we only had a fund balance of half a million dollars. Um, with the, the unknowns that are surely going to occur and even some additional decreases, again, which we are unable to quantify accurately, um, having only say a half a million dollar fund balance, you could potentially lose that entire amount on one of your local revenue tax line items. Uh, so again, to, to be able to have millions of dollars in reserve to help soften the blow from some of those items is definitely a better financial position to be in. So, so the storm is about to hit and we are prepared to fight. So uh, um, it, it's going to be difficult and the school board, and the administration are going to do our level best, to try to get us through this. I, I guess that's a, 
you know, the colloquial way of saying where the school board's head is right now. Is that true? That's true. Thank you. Welcome. So we have a lot of unknowns moving forward is what I'm hearing you saying. So we have really no idea what kind of revenue loss we're going to see as a result of property tax revenues and business tax revenues. We all have concerns about the mall and any other businesses in the community that contribute to our revenue that could go out of business. Um, and then we don't really know what the state's going to do next year. We're anticipating there'll be in a deficit and we're trying to assume that we may have to operate with less money from the state as well. Correct? That is correct. Any other board members want to comment or have any questions for Mr. Schott right now? None? Okay. I don't see any um, webinar chat comments. Bonnie, did you get any questions from anybody yet on agenda items? No, oh, I have not received any questions. Okay. There's nothing in item C, items previously tabled. So we'll move to section D, Mrs. Crump, personnel agenda. Thank you, Mr. Rucci. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda items one through three as listed in section D for the regular meeting of Tuesday, April 21st. Um, under resignations, we do have three listed. We want to thank each of those individuals for all that they've done for the district. Joseph Trail has served 20 years with the district. Judy Brown is retiring with 27, and Nadine Bowers is retiring with 23 years of experience in the district. And we wish each of them well in their new journey. And the transfers, we have six under the collective bargaining agreement. Three are new additions since the study session. And we have one additional supplemental contracts for issuance of a cheerleading head coach, um, a Ritter for 2520. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Scotty Williams. Is there a second? Second. Who said that? Two. I, I said one of them. Susan second. Delaney, second. I would like to open up for questions or comments. Uh, I just got one comment. Um, the one uh, name for resignation, Mr. Joseph Trill, um, I actually had the, the privilege to work alongside him uh, for a couple summers when uh, some college kids were able to help with the summer maintenance and preparing the schools during the summertime. Uh, he's been a great asset to the district. He made every day fun to be there. You know, I enjoyed working with him, very knowledgeable. Yeah, so I do want to thank him for the, the 20 years that he's put in with Gateway, and I wish him the absolute best in the next chapter. Very nice. Anyone else? Likewise, if I could add in, Mary Beth, um, I've had the privilege of knowing Joe and, and Nadine uh, for a number of years, and I, I personally want to thank each and every one of them for their service and contributions to the Gateway School District uh, for uh, many, many years of service. So thank you. And I also worked with uh, Nadine Bowers quite a bit. So um, she was fantastic to work with at the high school. Anyone else speak up? Cause I can't see everybody. Okay, none, then Bonnie will do a roll call. Okay, Mrs. Delaney. Oh, Bob. <laughs> Uh, aye. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Gottman? Aye. Mr. McIntyre? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mrs. Morning? Aye. Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Clary? Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Motion okay, carries. motion carries. Um, we do have a question that has come in from Claire Brown regarding a decision on the middle school renovation. Um, do you want to address that now or? We can address it now, Mrs. Sarushi. Uh, I do see the uh, question from Claire Brownie and uh, I do have Mr. Brown uh, here as well with me. Uh, but to answer your question, um, has a decision been made on the middle school renovation? Uh, we are currently moving forward with meetings with the architects 
uh, Axis Architectural Group. Uh, they are weekly meetings, um, typically myself, uh, central office personnel, uh, Mr. Bob Brown from uh, Head of Building and Grounds and Mr. Rocco Telly, the principal, uh, meet once a week. We are finalizing uh, preliminary drawings, uh, including what would be an estimate on the renovation project. Uh, currently, right now, the board has authorized us to go out and seek uh, bonds for the project. We have not decided to bring those forward or information forward to the board at this time. Uh, we are currently waiting uh, to see how this pandemic COVID-19 affects uh, the bond market and everything associated with that. But as far as uh, the process, we are continuing to move forward. So there's a hold on the bond, but we're moving forward with the planning. Correct. Okay. I don't see any other questions before I move on to the next section. Do you have anything, Bonnie, on a voicemail? No, I don't have anything at, at this time. Okay. So section E, there is no conferences and conventions, so we can move on to section F, which is administrative report. Okay, uh, elementary education, uh, Dr. Rossi. Sure, thank you, Dr. Short. Um, we have two items. Item number one, approve the professional development agreement for enhanced core reading instruction. And uh, this will be for the 2021 school year. Item number two, a Title II agreement. This is uh, a new item since the study session. And it's to accept the agreement with the ed tech team to provide professional development services for greater works as part of their Title II non-public share. All right, I'll take the remaining 11 items. Item number three is approval of the extension of the preventive maintenance service agreement for three weight rooms with g, &G Fitness Equipment Inc. for the 2021 fiscal year as depicted in exhibit B. Item number four is approval of the IDEA Part B use of funds subgrant agreement through the Allegheny Intermediate Unit number three for the 2021 fiscal year. That's depicted in exhibit C. Item number five, is approval of attachment A, notice of adoption of policies, procedures, and use of funds by school district of the Allegheny Army Unit Number Three, IDEA Part B for the 2021 fiscal year. That's depicted in Exhibit D. Item number six is district designation of agent for submittal of all required documents to the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency for reimbursement of applicable expenditures incurred during the historic COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 as depicted. Item number seven is approve the addendum to the current contract with Student Transportation of America, STA of Pennsylvania, Inc. for continued student transportation daily rate payments at 82% of the applicable contract prescribed rates for tr transportation days lost due to the current COVID-19 pandemic for the remainder of the 1920 school year as depicted in exhibit E. Item number eight, award of bids school supplies for the 2021 fiscal year that is depicted in exhibit f and all those items depicted in exhibit f are updated we actually had added as we referenced during the study session the athletic supplies number and there were adjustments to two other line items that are listed as well but again those total the 148,365 dollars and 61 cents item number nine approval of the purge service agreements with stair cycle slash shred it for the 2021 fiscal year is depicted in Exhibit G. Item number 10 is award the bid for the bus pull-off project at the Ramsey Elementary School to Santa Maria Landscape and Cement Contractors, Inc. in the total bid amount of $108,489.50 as a critical capital repair project to be completed during the 1920 and or 2021 fiscal year. Item number 11, award the bid for the retaining wall project at the Gateway High School Auditorium to Raffle Construction, LLC in the total bid amount of $180,540 even as a critical capital repair project to be completed during the 1920 and or 2021 fiscal year. Item number 12 is approve the amendment to the current agreement with the Allegheny County Department of Human Services for the reimbursement of expenditures incurred by the district for <coughs> applicable transportation of foster care children as depicted in exhibit H. And finally, item number 13 is the acceptance of district donation received during the 1920 fiscal year Specifically, accept a district donation from Valerie Warning, $8,671.27 in food-related purchased items. Our recipient, Jennifer Hoffner, the backpack program uh, for the benefit of all district school buildings. 
So moved. Motion Second. by Mr. Williams. Second by Mr. McIntyre. Questions, comments? Um, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh, I was just, can someone explain? I just wanted to know about item 12, approval of amendment to the current agreement with the Department of uh, Human Services for uh, transporting foster care students. Can, I just wanted clarification of sure. what it was. What what that is, we've had an agreement in place and the, basically we provide transportation services. Uh, we've unfortunately had to provide so, so much transportation services that it exceeded the original amount of the original agreement. Uh, so the agreement had to be extended for additional $10,000 to enable the district to get reimbursement for what was already incurred. Um, unfortunately, with the COVID-19 shutdown that incurred, um, you know, we won't be utilizing the, probably the balance of the agreement to, to the extent that we thought it possible. That's for our students that were in the Gateway School District, Mr. Shaw. Uh, that's my understanding of that. Um, Lonnie might be able to add something additional to that. That is correct. That's for students in our district. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think last week we had a pretty healthy discussion about uh, items 10 and 11 and yeah. uh, the usage of critical for, you know, legalese reasons versus critical being something that we must do right now. And uh, I, do we still have Mr. Brown on, uh, Bob? Yes, he is, he is here. Explain. Okay. Because uh, my... my I'm leaning towards right now not approving number 10 for the uh, the bus pull off at Ramsey just because I feel like that's something that can, that can wait another year or so. Well, why don't we hear from, you know, um, why don't we hear from, kind of doom. why don't we hear from Bob first, Rick, before you, you, why don't we hear the opinion of why we, they're recommending it and I'm interested in Mr. Caleri's opinion too as building and grounds chair. I'd like to hear from those well, too. Well, Okay, can everyone hear? Uh, can you hear me okay? Bob? Um, well, for the Ramsey pull up uh, and the term critical, that was a was terminology is put forth by the state for projects that we deem um, to have safety concerns behind them. Bob, this and, is John. Could you speak up a little bit more, please? How's that, John? Is that better? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, the terminology critical was something that was put forth by the state for projects that had safety concerns um, that needed to be done. And the Ramsey project actually um, is twofold as far as the safety concern. One is the traffic flow of the buses and the parent drop offs at the you know, early in the day and even more so at the end of the day that it gets pretty bad. Um, that is the first part. The second part is the condition of the, the area. The concrete that is in bad shape uh, poses tripping hazards um, that we also have to be very cognizant about. So by doing that, you know, on both fronts, uh, it did become a critical situation. We were able to um, actually come in under our estimated budget numbers by just a little bit. So for that, those reasons uh, is why that we're looking to do that. Um, STA has sent us uh, a note with some reasons as well. Folks are driving past our school buses with flashing lights on. There has been a few fender benders in that area. Um, it's a quite congested area with only one way in and one way out. So, you know, that's the reasoning behind that. All right. So um, Bob gave a really great answer to that. And um, I absolutely concur with him 100%. I had the opportunity to go out and look at it um, and I'll say it not as eloquently as Bob did, but this is an accident waiting to happen. Um, there's there a lot of issues there. 
Um, and as a parent dropping off and or picking up uh, a child, um, we do have the opportunity now to fix it. Um, this isn't a break the bank type of thing that we're getting into. And it's, it's a, it's a, um, this is needed. Um, there are actually, Bob, I know you said there is a potential tripping hazards and I know people have tripped over um, uh, the one central part of the sidewalk. And if you tried to cone that off, because believe me, I thought about that a lot, you'd take out most of the sidewalk. That's just how big of an impediment that is. Um, um, and, you know, for all those reasons, I mean, I just agree with Bob that this is something that even given the state of affairs right now, that this is something we should move forward with. I have a question. Um, is the money for this already in the capital reserve fund budget? Has it been moved into the into it? I mean, because once it's there, you said it can't be moved out. It it has not been moved. It is budgeted in terms of the expenditure transfer line item. Okay. Uh, and, it, and, it, and that is exactly correct. We don't move any more dollars into the capital reserve fund um, until we're actually set to actually expend them in terms of issuing a check for a payment for that. Because again, just for everyone to know, once you move money into the capital reserve fund, you cannot move it back to the general fund. Right. So, so what you're saying is, is if this would get approved tonight and two weeks down the road for not something worse would happen, we could talk about this again. I mean, in theory, I mean, obviously the, the one thing that we were still not sure of is, is exactly, I think uh, Governor Wolf had mentioned May 8th as possibly the, the loosening of, of um, uh, opportunity for some construction to begin. We haven't got all the exact details of that. Um, one of the things we do have going for these two projects is that they are both outside. So social distancing could still be maintained by the contractor to move forward in that manner as well. Just to mention that too. I have one question for Bob actually and i'm sorry bob i would have asked you this sooner but paul just made me think of it um if the um governor wolf doesn't lift anything and we can't get the contractor in which what's the absolute cutoff date that says okay look we're not getting this in this year we have allocated 45 days for construction okay. so depending on part of school for the 2021 year, um, that'll determine that. And we had placed a 45 day time frame on that job from start to finish. So I still think that gives us plenty of time. Either. Initially, we didn't be even think to start until after graduation and the teachers were done for the year being June 2nd as a potential start date. Uh, there's just a huge buffer there then we're, yes. but we're in good shape yeah thanks i got one question um just to play a little devil's advocate i mean i'm all for child safety with our students um so nobody get me wrong on that um but the one thing that's like sticking to is the the traffic patterns the school has been built since the 70s and i don't think we've changed much to the outside of it and it was mentioned that traffic patterns are pretty bad. I'm just curious, has the traffic patterns always been this bad? And kind of why now would be the time to change and do the traffic patterns as opposed to before all this was going on or maybe a year or two after this? Well, it's not just traffic pattern, it's the condition of the- oh, right. Right, I understand that, but if for factoring in traffic too, I was just curious, when did that become an issue? It has gradually becoming an issue over the years to be more and more um, of a drop off point rather than having the children all on the bus. And we still have to maintain those number of seats for buses. So bus traffic cannot lessen, the car traffic has increased. And can I add to that a little bit? Is as, as Bob and I were looking at that, I was, um, I don't want to say more focused on, but my attention was really brought to the, the part of the entry, not the Turner, not the uh, road itself, but the actual sidewalk. Um, 
because I thought the same way is like, well, if this has been a problem all along, why now? Um, that sidewalk right now has deteriorated so bad, it's not going <coughs> to get better. And I think it's to the point where, I know it's to the point where you're not going to get away with a year of just patching it and kind of moving on. Um, to just the, the um, it, it's in that much of a disrepair and then would kind of be remiss not to just finish the project and take that the rest of the way around. I mean, it's kind of all built together. I think what has happened, and uh, Paul, you did a very good job of um, describing it. The building was constructed in 1970. Uh, it's original concrete out front. Uh, there's been some adjustments, uh, some um, items that have been removed and then poured over with some concrete. But uh, a number of the trees and, and the roots along that one side have uh, come underneath the con concrete and lifted it. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're looking at... 50 years uh, of just multiple issues related to the, the concrete. And then um, of course, as Paul um, said, and, and Bob echoed it, the, the amount of cars that are now utilizing that area for drop off and pickup has increased with more drivers and parents uh, dropping off and picking up. Any other questions? Any other questions on any other items? Yeah, this is John. I'd just like to commend Val Warning for the, um, the wonderful donation of food to the kids. You know, may the Lord reward you for pouring out your seed to the kids so that they might have some, something to eat. Any other questions on any other items in section F? If not, I would seek a motion to approve. I just have so one, moved. one comment. Um, yes. Yeah, last week we briefly mentioned as the athletic supply number was being put in into that figure, there was some discussion about what the expenses are. And uh, I want to, I appreciate um, Mr. Schott for getting back to me so quickly. Um, and if anybody in the public is curious as to those numbers, that's a reduction in previous year's expenses by about $30,000. So last year that was. 66,000, I think it was 63,000 the previous year. So I, I commend all the great work in trying to get what we need um, without overspending. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on section F? Okay, who made the motion to approve? John moves uh, to accept. Uh, Scott Williams made the motion and John, Rick McIntyre made the second already. Very good. Okay. I couldn't Then when you're ready, we'll do roll call. Okay. Mr. Gallagher? Aye. Mr. Gottman? Aye. Mr. McIntyre? Yes, on all items except number 10. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Clary? Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mrs. Spillane? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions from residents coming in that we need to know about before we move on? Um, I have no emails or calls. Okay, we have no more sections in our agenda, so it will be time for superintendent's report. Go ahead, Dr. Short. Thank you, Mrs. Cerucci. Um, I want to thank all of our uh, students and, and families for uh, their work, their due diligence, and ensuring that uh, the continuance of learning is taking place with our children. Uh, we, we understand and um, are, are committed to providing the education um, while also ensuring that our, our students um, have that time to meet virtually with teachers, uh, to ask questions, to get solutions to problems that they may be having difficulty with. Uh, we understand that this is not a face-to-face -face, uh, reality that we're uh, enduring at this time, but uh, uh, we are making strides every day 
uh, with our lesson planning and instruction to ensure that our students receive the best that we can offer. Uh, likewise, uh, I've sent out a number of communications regarding uh, information about activities related to high school events, especially with seniors. Uh, just to reiterate that the prom has been canceled. Uh, I've been in communication with Mr. Stevens, the high school principal. Uh, they are coordinating an event that could take place in June or July uh, around the senior gala. More information will be forthcoming from his office. Uh, also, I've uh, listed the date of May 27th as the existing graduation date with June 25th as an alternative. Uh, please understand as this situation is very fluid and with Governor Wolf's uh, direction of May 8th opening up slightly, this does not guarantee that we will have a graduation ceremony on May 25th outdoors, I'm sorry, May 27th outdoors or June 25th. Uh, in the event that we do not have the opportunity to do both, uh, we would probably be holding a virtual graduation ceremony on the existing date of May 27th. Uh, so again, more information will be forthcoming from my office. It will be communicated uh, via the same system that we've communicated uh, with the families and constituents in the community. So. Uh, uh, please stay tuned uh, for more information. It is rapidly evolving, uh, but first and foremost is, is the health, safety, and welfare of our students and families and everyone involved. So uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Short. Dr. Ross, do you have anything? Uh, nothing further, thank you. Dr. Shakey? Nothing get this time, thank you. Mrs. Bungart. Thank you, Ms. Ricci. I'd like to commend all of our staff, parents, and students for all of their hard work as we continue to move through our virtual learning platform. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Crom, do you have anything additional? Nothing at this time, thank you. Mr. Schott, do you have anything else? Nothing further, thank you. All right. Mr. Dice, are you there? He hasn't said a word all night. Just wanted to give him one chance. Okay. Um, if there's no comments, Bonnie, I'll probably ask for a motion to approve in a minute. Oh, we have to go through board reports. I'm sorry. Are there any comments from residents before we go on to the board members? Uh, no, I have not. no emails or comments. Okay, just wanna keep giving opportunities. Okay, let's move on to board reports. Mr. McIntyre. Uh, nothing at this time. All right, Mr. Clary. Sorry, I already started talking. I'll start over. I just wanted to thank everybody for their support on our virtual learning. Um, I know just as a parent that, you know, this was, you know, a little hard to get into, but we've had a lot of support from the teachers and staff. Um, and I just wanted to thank everybody else and be safe out there. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Williams. Nothing at this time, thank you. Dr. Gallagher. Nothing this evening. Mr. Ritter. Sure, two or three things. I'm sort of you know, heartbroken that the, this, the seniors are going to graduate and they're not going to have the normal, you know, excitement uh, or traditional get-togethers that seniors usually have. I was trying to think of ways that we could possibly um, invent that, that could honor some of the students. For example, maybe having them march in a parade, you know, the Independence Day parade, and just have folks give a warm round of applause to the seniors that are graduating, or, or maybe do something athletically, you know, have the lacrosse team or the track team, or the, uh, somebody just to go out there and and open up the field to let the students who didn't get to compete maybe just have sort of a club sport get together or something like that. But just about everything that you know we've tried to brainstorm and think of, and there's just no way to actually do it because the Independence Day Parade has now been canceled. The mayor canceled that today in order to help keep the, the people in Monroeville safe. So we, we can't honor the students that way. Um, it, it, it'll be so much, um, of a time lapse between when the students were in shape 
to um, to compete uh, between now and when they might get to compete, like two, three, four months from now, we can't have the students be out there competing at a high level, which is what they would want to do. So they get together on the athletic fields if we would open that. That won't work either. So I'm just, you know, at my wits end, trying to think of ways to honor these students. And so if anybody out there in um, you know, the community could think of some ways to just you know, surround the graduating high school students, you know, either do it yourself or get together with some other folks and do it or let the school board know, the administrative know, administration know, if we could find a way to honor them, let, let's try to find a way. But this is very difficult. On them. So Ms. Trucci, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Ritter. Mrs. Warning. Uh, nothing at this time. Mr. Gottman. Uh, normally at this time, I would be uh, talking about the wonderful work that our students would be providing. However, clearly we have none. So uh, I'll think of something to do for next week, but for now I have nothing further. I have an idea. Why don't you have any of the kids that want to submit artwork, scan them and email them to you and you can pick your top three and you could show them at the next meeting virtually. I love that idea. B. Gottman at gatewayk12.org. Send your kids artwork. Perfect. Also put them in a PowerPoint <laughs> and rotate them yes. through on the local cable access station. All right. Um, Mrs. Delaney, you're up. Yes, just a few things. Um, one, I had shared, uh, I had been in contact with various teachers and all just to touch base, see how they're doing and faring with this. and. Uh, one of the articles I shared with them was called Exhausted and Grieving Teaching During the Coronavirus uh, Crisis. And many, of course, are appreciating just the communication. But the one thing that uh, I was really touched by were many of them that were saying that they really missed their students. And uh, as difficult as it was making the adjustment, uh, the teachers are trying very hard to make those adjustments. So this works for everyone. And then uh, also, I had, and many of you people, or not you people, many people would not have heard of uh, an individual by the name of Nathaniel Burtley. Nathaniel Burtley was the first African American who was the uh, school board superintendent for Flint, Michigan. And he did happen to pass earlier, uh, a few weeks ago, from the coronavirus. So I thought I'd share that. He had become the first school board superintendent in, uh, as an African-American in 1988. And unfortunately, uh, this particular virus has taken his life. So I thought I'd share that. Thank you, Mrs. Delaney. Uh, the only thing that I would say is in, in response to Mr. Ritter, to your comments about seniors is I'm there, I have a senior. And you know, it's, it's sad what these kids are missing out on. Um, but I know as a board and in my conversations with the administrators, that Gateway is not gonna make any hasty decisions and cancel things. I feel like I look around us and I see people canceling events that are so many months off and I'm gonna maintain an optimistic view and hope for the best. And we are waiting until the last possible minutes to cancel events. So, and we acknowledge that it's very important to honor the accomplishments of our seniors. And I think all of us want to do that. And I'm very excited to know that we're looking at alternate dates for some type of a senior dance for the kids in, in the summertime because prom got canceled and I'm going to continue to hope and pray that we can still have a graduation ceremony, even if it's later. And we're, we're not going to abandon our students and this accomplishment that they have. And if you have any other ideas on what we can do, we're open to it. But we're not we're not throwing in the towel yet, are we, guys? Excellent. Good job. So with that, I would seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Move. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> that was a confusing. <laughs> All right. I think we're adjourned. I thank you, everybody, for your time and your participation. Thank Have you. Have a good everyone. week.